In this video, I'm going to show you how you can pull in historical stock prices for multiple tickers and how to create visuals in seconds that make it easy to spot a stock's highs and lows over that period. Now, before we jump in, if you're finding these tutorials and tips helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and make sure to enable notifications so you never miss another video. Excel has a built-in stock history function that you can use to pull in a stock's historical prices. So let's say I wanted to pull in Apple's, Apple stock price. I can set a start date of, let's say today, minus 365 days to go back a full year and up until today. I can specify the interval. So let's say in this example, I wanna pull in monthly stock prices. So it's gonna give me the end of month values. And I can specify whether I want to um, show a header or not. So I'll leave that as, as a default as, as showing one. And I can specify exactly which properties I want to include. So let's say I put in zero for the date, one for the closing value. If I close this out, you know, now I now I conveniently see Apple's Apple stock prices as of um, the, these different months. And so we've got October 2023 all the way through October 2024. One thing to keep in mind, however, is that although these say October 1st, January 1st, February 1st, those are not the actual values relating to those specific days um, of the year. Those are These are still end of month values. This is just a formatting issue in Excel. So if Excel pulls in a value for February 2024, it's gonna to default to February 1st, 2024. So that's not the actual trading. Day. It's still the end of month value. So one way to fix this is to adjust the formatting, which I will in a, in a later step. So right now I've got the values going vertically, but I want to flip them to go horizontally. So it's easier to plot that chart. So what I'm going to do is use Excel's transpose function and I'm going to wrap this entire formula within that. And just like that, I flipped it now. So it's going horizontally. I'll auto fit my values and I'm going to select these dates to right click format cells and then under custom I'm going to type in MMM so I've got the month and then three Y values so I got the year so now I've got the values uh, I can clearly see the dates that this is referring to now I'm going to get rid of these these headers so I included the headers but I'm going to change that to zero to get rid of that just so I've got uh, more space here and I'm gonna move this formula over here and apply the formatting. So I've got my date still set up the, the same way. I'm gonna add another, insert another column here because this is where I'm gonna put my, my chart. And I'm gonna put my ticker symbol here. So for Apple over here. So rather than hard coding these values, I'm gonna reference Apple stock this way. And I'm gonna lock um, that first column, column A. So now I've got the stock price based on the ticker that's in uh, that's in uh, in column A. So if I want to add more tickers, let's say Amazon, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this this formula, except the one thing I'm going to do differently is I'm not going to pull in those um, the date. So right now I've got that date date property pulling in, but I don't want to include that because I've already got that as my header. I just want to pull in the actual values. And so I'm just going to update this. So it's referring Amazon. And so I've got Amazon stock prices for the same, same range because everything about my formula is exactly the same. The only difference is now I'm just not including those headers because it would be redundant and I don't need to, to include them anymore. So let's add some more stocks here so google meta microsoft nvidia tesla and actually i don't have to copy all that i just have to copy that first value down and now it's going to automatically adjust so we've got those historical values um going across and so the now the next thing i'm going to do is use excel spark lines to show uh, show the changes in these values in a chart. So I'm going to select the value right in here, this cell here. I'm going to go to insert under spark lines. There is a line line spark line that I can select. And I'm going to select my data range over here. 
and hit OK. And you can see now it's created that visual for me. I can copy this down and the logic is going to, to be updated. So it's always going to be pulling in um, from the values next to next to it. So we can see the, the trends. Now this is a little bit small. So what I can do is adjust the size of these rows to make it a, a lot a lot easier to see this. So let's say I select these, these rows, right click, select row height, and let's set it to 50. So it's fairly big, let's stretch this out as well. So now we can see these, and maybe that's a bit, a bit big. Let's change this to, let's say 45, just so we can fit it a bit better. Hi, that first one, there we go. So now we can see all the stocks there and we've got their, their trends. But we can still customize these spark lines and you'll notice once I select one, it knows that I'm gonna be uh, applying the formatting to, to all of them. So if I go to the spark, spark line tab that shows up, I can adjust the, the color and the marker color and there's actually templates here that I can, that I can use, presets, uh, preset styles. I can also indicate the high point and the low point during these values. And if I click on this, you can see that they're highlighted. Now, it may be a little bit difficult to, to see, but we can still see where, where in that trend these stocks hit their highs and their lows. So I can adjust the, I can adjust the sparkline color if I wanted to. I can adjust the weight. So let's say I want it to be a bit thicker so it stands out a little bit more. Um, and let's say I want a, a gray color. Right, so if I want to adjust that weighting so it's a bit smaller perhaps, one point, there we go. And I can also adjust the marker color. So let's say for the high point, I can make it a, whoops, the high point set it to a green color. And then for the low point, set it to a red color. And so by doing this, it makes it a lot easier now to see these trends. And obviously if I expand this, if I wanted to see a bit more, then I can adjust this um, to how I want it. But by doing it this way, it's easy to not only pull in the actual data values and stock values as of the, as of the end of each of these months, but I can also visually see the trends. So you don't have to go to Yahoo Finance, you don't have to go anywhere to, to do that. You can pull that, pull that information right through that stock history function and by flipping it using the transpose function, you've got it going horizontally across. And you can also display that in a spark line that makes it easy to see. And there's a lot of customization just within the spark line that you can um, you can adjust if you wanted to, to see a different color, use a different style. A lot of customization options you can use here to make your uh, spark lines look, look really cool. So that's how you can track stocks in historical stock prices in Excel and visualize them as well on a chart. If you like this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.